Much love to Audible for sponsoring this video and helping me trick people into thinking I actually read. As a lot of y'all already know, I'm a pretty wholesome dude. Why are we zooming out? What is, hey, hey, no, hey, no. You know, and I know it is because I have a rule when it comes to, um, what's the word? Uh, the, the fun time, we're gonna call it the fun time. We're gonna call it that. This is a rule I've set in stone for myself. That rule being, I won't uh have fun time with someone unless we are in a relationship. And now I know, I get it. Oh, but Kurt, haven't you brought girls back to your crib? Yes. Yes, I have to cuddle. I was a serial cuddler. Surprisingly enough, this is not a euphemism for sex, if you know what I'm talking about. In fact, there's been a couple times where I brought a girl over and she thought we were gonna have sex. Uh, no, baby, I just wanted to like talk about our feelings and like hold you for like seven hours. The only thing getting smashed in my house are high expectations, which is really on them for having. And usually after hearing all that, the question people are usually asking is why won't I go any further, which is fair. And in all honesty, I was probably meant to be a hoe. Like that shit was really written in the stars, bro. My dad was a player in college. My mom, although not a player, got her fair share of game in college. I mean, I'm a light skinned dude over six foot, uh, Scorpio. Uh, I make YouTube videos for a living. These ones, Specifically, this whole thing kind of screams, I'm gonna ruin your life. I don't know, maybe it's parenting, I guess. I have this mini philosophy that parents will usually teach you to go the opposite way that they went when they were your age. So if your parents were out on the streets doing things that would potentially make them a parent a lot, they'll probably like push you to do the opposite due to bad experiences. And the vice versa is naturally also true. And because of my parents' experience with uh, hoicisms, if you will, trademark Kurt Richie, I kind of leaned into the opposite end of the spectrum of okay so we're never doing that all right cool but you know i was fine with it i mean the urge was there don't get me wrong but honestly i saw it as an honest way to develop relationships but good things don't last see the reason why i changed was because of a girl you know very courage yes but this girl was different she's a girl i've talked about once before the girl that changed everything not i'm too deep in this video to talk about what happened to have made me change that she did to me. But I can say what she did had me crying in a hallway at 2 a.m. in the morning. So, yeah, we're gonna be a hoe now. Because of those events, uh, I turned the petty levels up to 36 out of 10. And after that, I figured, man, now's a good time as ever uh, to start a whole phase. I feel like that's the thing a lot of college students go through. And I'm not talking bring girls back to cuddle. Oh, no, no, no. I'm talking about the full nine yards. Bring them back. Uh, we're not just cuddling, uh, giving consent, and then probably never seeing them again. We're going that far. This is the Kurt everyone thought I was. This is what I was trying to do. I mean, no, real talk, there's nothing wrong with being a hoe as long as all parties are agreeing and know what's going on. So I think this is a great life direction. Anyone? Yes? Yeah. All right, so one night I'm out with my friends with the intention of bringing a girl back. And bear in mind, this is during college where everyone is basically horny. Uh, all the time all right, and I don't know the exact process of how we met these girls But eventually at one of these parties my friends and I met up with three girls He knew from class and there was one girl that particularly grabbed my eye and we'll call her Tati based off how many problems she will soon cause now the college ritual for casual hookups was something I wasn't really particularly knowledgeable in I mean, I'm talking about a one-night stand here. Okay, so I had to consult the professionals on this WikiHow. I'm not kidding. I dead ass Googled WikiHow how to have one night stand. This article is from 2020, but I, I it was, it was, <laughs> it was real. So according to the pros, this whole thing is broken down into three parts. Uh, part one, finding a willing partner, which I would really hope you follow. Part two, sealing the deal. Seems like we skipped a lot of steps there, but okay. And part three, handling the aftermath. All right, cool. I have the knowledge now. Let's do the thing. So I'm talking this girl up and she's actually pretty cool. I'm like, okay, all right, this is this is something. We have things to talk about, which I'm not good at bringing up in normal conversation. So we're already off to a great start. I was getting the laugh. She was doing the touch shoulder thing, which I think is a good sign according to my research. So I'm like, okay, cool. Rapport has been established. And to follow that is the very simple task of sealing the deal. Again, feel like we skipped a lot of steps. And although I was on track, I don't know. This whole sealing the deal thing felt a little weird i don't know like it just felt off like am i really built for this am i really this kind of guy i don't know i needed like a sign some kind of sign to let me know that this was okay 
And then almost on cue, someone yells, Hey, yo, the cops are coming. Now, before you know it, sirens are going off in all directions. Everyone at this party is scrambling like eggs. Tati then grabbed my hand. I think that was the sign, which in hindsight, probably could have been interpreted differently. But there, we made it to the next step of the ritual. I bring her back to my place. And you know, I was excited. I was excited to finally be the hoe I was meant for. I took her back to mine, we properly consented, and we were finally here. The first start, the kiss. As her lips came to mine, I felt that this was it. And then we kissed, and it felt terrible. <laughs> Yo. So while we're kissing, homegirl bites my lip a little. Oh, that's nice. Then she bites it a little more. I'm like, I, oh, that's um not nice then a little bit more ah uh, okay i don't i don't there's a little less nice now and then she bites my lip so hard it starts bleeding okay all right i i literally i'm feeling iron in my mouth but i mean it was like slightly inconsequential thankfully the drunkenness numbed the pain and again i don't care about a little pain i was way too petty about that previous situation to let a little blood get in the way Without going into too gory details, uh, it should have. So I won't go into full details because, you know, money. So here's a little PG-13 recap. First base, we kind of slid in there. Uh, second base, kind of like tumbled over it and like, like tripped and hit my head on the plate. Third base, we just like kicked it. We kicked it and it, it was not, the base was not what it, was, it should have been. This experience was not a a fun one at all i actually had a terrible time like so bad that i'm like man i really can't wait till she leaves in the morning that, that ended up being the only thing i was looking forward to was the her leaving part of the ritual ah uh, god it wasn't the best experience it was awkward no one finished no one got to the home run no one completed their journey i i'm not good at euphemism you know what i mean right so i slowly woke up in the morning believe that the experience was finally over and the stranger wasn't in my bed anymore and the stranger was still in my bed ah i forgot the wiggy house that i shouldn't leave immediately after finishing because it sends the wrong signals damn it ah uh. and that was it that was my first one night stand experience it was an overall bad time not only did i feel bad about doing it but i did not have fun i forgot it involved talking to strangers which unfortunately is a requirement to do things with someone else and not to mention i got something even worse after so a couple weeks after the hookup i felt really weird i felt something that scared me half to death but I'll have to explain that another time. <laughs> so I might make poor decisions, but you don't have to if you go on ahead and check out this video's sponsor, Audible. So with Audible, you can enjoy audiobooks wherever, whenever, literally, as long as y'all got your mask on, wherever. And even better, if you click the link in the description and get this 30-day free trial, any books you get with Audible, you keep forever. Like you keep, they're yours. Even if the trial ends, you keep them, they're yours. You can go on, check them out anytime, even if you cancel. But should you hold on to it, which you might want to think about, you get three credits on your account every month, which is good for, wait for it, one audio book and two audible originals. So you can keep getting more things continuously, like whatever, despite the price. I picked up a lot of new stuff, but I've still been rolling through the David Goggins book, which is Ooh, I highly recommend it if you're feeling like you want to better your life and take advantage of your situation. But Audible is seriously a great service, so I really highly suggest checking it out because it helps support me when you do that and they can come back and, and want to sponsor me more so I can afford living in New York. I, I don't know why I chose this. I, I don't know. So if you want to support the channel and get yourself a nice 30 day free trial with a bunch of free stuff with Audible, go to audible.com forward slash Kurt Ritchie or text Kurt Ritchie to 500 500 to get yourself a 30 day free trial. Once again, go to audible.com forward slash Kurt Ritchie or text Kurt Ritchie to 500 500. Check out Audible. Listen to some great audiobooks today. Oh, what's up, y'all? Yo, thank you so much for peeping that video. Um, it, it took some time uh, because I moved. Uh, as you can see, you can tell there's a random white guy here. Who is this white guy? That's get mad. <laughs> <laughs> so if you like that video, check out my last one where I talk about what your type says about you, where I basically just made fun of you for a while and we'll probably do again uh, more later. Wait, I got a boogie. There you go, okay. More later. Yo, but I'm sorry there haven't been like videos out. I'm going back to bi-weeklies here. Uh, it's cause we moved and uh, the whole moving process is something. But yeah, we, we, I have a home now uh, in New York.
so it's fun there's a new record at the end of the week and that's really about it oh and check out the streaming channel if you haven't please watch me stream uh danganronpa where i kill kids well other people kill kids and i figure out how they killed the kids anyway it's a fun time much love thank you for watching and i'll see y'all next time